Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Moonfall, out now on HBO Max. This is a movie written and directed by Roland Emmerich, a movie about the moon falling. Roland Emmerich, obviously the guy who's directed many movies uh, similar to this, uh, like Independence Day, uh, 2012, 10,000 BC. A lot of movies where a lot of destruction happens, a lot of global destruction happens. And this movie is in many ways a cookie-cutter lesser version, I would say, to uh, a lot of those movies. Actually, let me take that back. The only movie of Roland Emmerich I really like is Independence Day. Uh, The rest of them are not that great. Uh, This one included. I, uh, you know... I could see people enjoying this movie, especially if you're intoxicated. This is basically a big budget B movie, which has a fun time and place. I enjoy a good B movie. I recently watched the Sharknado franchise, which is a a franchise of movies that truly embraces the B movie aspect of it and is, I would say, intentionally trying to be a quote unquote so bad it's good type of a movie uh moonfall i would say is a movie that could have been if i were intoxicated on different things alcohol weed uh etc etc i may have and maybe if i was hanging out with people that were in a good mood and you know enjoy talking shit about movies i probably would have enjoyed this a bit more Uh, Because I did try and turn my brain off. I knew this movie going in was going to be, uh, you know, it was. I knew it wasn't going to be a thinker. I knew it wasn't going to be a film that would elevate and and transcend past Roland Emmerich works. Uh, I knew going in that this movie was not going to be that great. But I also knew that you know there is. There is potential for fun to be had. And I would say this movie, despite how ridiculous it is, is kind of fun in that way. Uh, you know, it's the writing is pretty horrible. There is a, a, a part of this movie that is a completely different movie that is a much more interesting movie uh, that is really just described in exposition towards the end of the film. Uh, Kind of the reasoning for everything happening, that exposition that happens, uh, was a far more interesting movie than the movie that was shown, than the story that was told in this movie. But, you know, because of the ridiculous nature, it's definitely like, it's a movie that really like begs for the audience to talk shit. Like it's a movie that like does the most outrageous things. Similarly to a movie franchise where sharks are being swept up in a tornado and attacking people in uh, all sorts of places sharks should never be. Uh, this movie is doing things that never would have existed, uh, that, that just boggle the mind. It is a very surreal movie in a lot of ways. Uh, like this movie, how it uses science, quote-unquote, Uh, is a very imaginative way. And like many Roland Emmerich films, of course, there's a conspiracy theorist in this movie, which is, of course, uh, somebody who knows the the answers and is actually right about his conspiracy theories. Uh, You know, similarly, even to uh, Independence Day has that same type of character. And, you know, it was fun. It was fun. Aliens exist. Oh, aliens really do exist in this movie. Uh, It's something different. I am going to be spoiling things about this movie. Obviously, it's been out for a while. It just hit HBO Max, but it came out earlier this year. And, uh, you know, because of that, I'm sure people that wanted to see it in theaters have already seen it. I would imagine my views for this episode are going to be pretty low, considering it's a movie that came out six months ago or whatever it was. But I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to discuss the things I did not like, the things that were wacky, the things that broke my brain over and over again. 
the writing isn't good. The performances or whatever, they're okay. I mean, you really can't get a bad performance when the writing is already just what's happening on screen is so batshit. But that being said, it is a movie worth talking about. Like, it is a movie that would, if only to dissect how absolutely horrible this movie is, uh, gives reason to talk about it. Like, it, it's not just a bad movie that's like, ah, oh, give or take it. It's just like, it's actively bad. Like, it actively makes you kind of hate the movie for just showing you these ridiculous ideas and it's a movie where it feels like there is a community of people right there's a community of people especially nowadays community of people that believe in batshit crazy things that have zero problem moving the goalposts that have zero problem going along with whatever the person on the tv tells them to Right, There are plenty of people in this country that I'm sure watched this movie and thought it was the best thing they've ever seen. Probably confirmed. Like, they watch it as if it's confirming their beliefs of what the moon is. Which is disturbing. It's disturbing that there's probably a large population of the country that looks at Moonfall as a work of truth and honesty and believability and events that would probably happen and will probably happen and it is sad it is just an example of why the education system in america is gone to shit they fund police more than the the education system and it is very clear (laughs) you know it is very clear i don't know how much money this movie made uh you know it came out you know towards the tail end of when people were still acknowledging that there was a pandemic going on people are still dying every day but as far as the way things look and operate people just pretend that it's over however let's get into this movie like i said typical to archetypes for a roland emmerich film it starts off first off you think it's a movie about just The moon is falling out of orbit and it's going to crash into the world and we need to do something to save, to avoid that from happening. The movie's a lot more than that because apparently the moon is a mega structure built by aliens and is fueled by a dwarf star at the center that the aliens captured and the energy from that star powers this mega structure and something happened, and now that megastructure that we call the moon, that isn't just a rock floating in space, is actually a spaceship that's crashing into the, into the world. Right? Okay. Whatever. That's kind of the interesting part. Like, the end of this movie, when it's getting into the exposition, I'm talking spoilers for those that maybe I've missed that. Definitely spoilers. The end of this movie, where all the exposition's going in, when they're at the mega structure and they've flown inside of it and they're in that white room and they're just being exposition dump, exposition dump. This is the history of this alien planet of people that use these mega structures as like an arc and they went like all of that stuff is far more interesting. Like the AI took over and they're they're attacking anything that has biological people inside of uh, electronics, right? And because of that, they had to escape, and they built this arc and all this stuff. That whole story, way more interesting, and it's just told via exposition at the end of this movie. And the the rest of this movie is like this NASA mission to try and stop this moon from crashing into the world before the government nukes the moon. Because nukes solve everything. You know, it, it is pretty much like Trump wrote this because he thinks that nukes, I think he wanted to nuke a storm to stop it, which is also bombing storms is literally what they do to stop the Sharknado. So the, the, the fact that a group of people believes the, the realism and the science behind B-movies is astounding. But it doesn't make sense why the government would want to nuke the moon as it's like you know 
just a few hundred feet off the ground, by the way. Like the moon, you can see it like scraping the top of mountains. That's how close the moon is to the world, which I don't know how it's still like f going around the world. Like that doesn't make any sense. But the idea that the government's going to nuke the moon, which would just break it up into a bunch of pieces, which is what they're predicting the moon's going to do anyway, and they're trying to avoid the moon from breaking up into a bunch of pieces once it gets close enough to the world it doesn't make any sense why that is the 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 fix it's like adding more guns to fix shooting problems like we're going to fix we're going to eradicate mass shooting by adding more guns we're going to avoid the moon from breaking up and demolishing the world by blowing the moon up into a bunch of pieces it doesn't make any sense. It, it's it's it batshit, but whatever. Okay, of course. It's the thing. They got to stop the military from nuking. Whatever. So they're putting this thing together. You have Halle Berry and Patrick Wilson who were astronauts, and they were on a mission, and they were attacked by a swarm of, like, nanobots. Like, it just looks like a cloud, you know, a sentient cloud out in space. And Patrick Wilson... His character is blamed for the, the loss of life. One of the astronauts dies. Not to mention he landed this, this spacecraft without any uh, electronics working, right? Which was amazing. He literally saved uh, the, the life of Halle Berry's character. But he's blamed for... And during the deposition for that, they're giving examples of things that may have been the reasoning for that, but because they didn't go along with the solar flare or whatever, they put it all on him for some... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, so he's kicked out of NASA because he's like, oh, he's the one responsible for the death, even though they have video of this. It doesn't make any sense, right? But we need to have this, this maverick NASA pilot who's been dishonorably discharged from the from NASA and he's on the outs and he's like just his family fall apart both his family and Halle Berry's family they're both divorced right Div another p aspect of Roland Emmerich troubled families broken families trying to reunite a family during a disaster let's take a little break from the Ray Taylor show to promote my live art streams that's right i am an artist as well as a podcaster and i paint live every thursday at 4 20 pacific time head on over the best place ever for streaming youtube.com slash inspired disorder that's right every thursday at 4 20 you can watch me paint the many faces every week i paint seven new faces of abstract portraits ink on paper and you can watch that happen you can hang out with me while i listen to a classic episode from one of my favorite podcasts head on over to youtube.com slash inspired disorder and check it out say hi let's hang out let's have some fun and let's paint some faces now let's get back to the show both of their families for whatever reason his son turns into like a troublemaker or whatever dumb dumb so part of this movie is is Halle Berry and Patrick Wilson's character teaming up again with this conspiracy theorist guy to go on a mission to do something. To, like, fly to the moon that's crashing down and really close to the world because you see it, like, it's so close that the gravity of the moon is overpowering the gravity of the Earth and causing things causing people to like float causing like the oceans to kind of float there's a there's it's like a gravity wave which is it looks crazy like a lot of aspects of this is very dreamlike and surreal but to act like it's what would happen in that situation like i'm not a scientist but that broke my brain i can't imagine what neil degrasse tyson would say watching this movie he would probably just kill himself if he had to watch this movie because of all of the bad science. And by the way, NASA is equated to just a couple guys who aren't very good at science. 
like the guy the conspiracy theorist guy that just has a fast food job knows about knows more about knows more science than the two guys that work at nasa which is another weird thing like the casting very few people working the 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 visual aspect of nasa does not seem like what we know nasa looks like like their control mission control kind of area where they have the big screen and everybody's like all facing the screen all the different departments like if you've seen for all mankind or apollo 13 you know that there's a, a shitload of smart people working at nasa and you know like they they would they wouldn't be like the last to know that the moon is out of orbit but some guy who works at a fast food place and has a podcast like is able to uncover it and is the first to break the news it, it's mind-blowing it, it it's like so mind-blowing and by the way that conspiracy theorist is a huge elon musk stan like he simps for elon musk which is like also fits in with that crew although part of that crew is anti elon musk but then now, now musk is also conservative so it's kind of a weird situation i guess where you know it, it that that whole side of the coin the, the side the group of people in this country or in the world that would watch this movie and and be like yeah that's sound science i believe everything that's in this movie uh it, it's kind of weird it's it's mind-blowing just to dissect how that even works on its own so they're trying to do this mission that's whatever i don't know what i i don't even know what their mission oh they're gonna launch an emp and for some reason attacking the moon with an emp is going to stop it from crashing into the world i don't understand how that's supposed to happen makes just as much sense as nuking the the planet it's shown that it can change course and correct course but this cloud thing is attacking it so it can't correct course i don't know and then the, the other part of this story is the evacuation of the kids right you have halle berry's kid and you have uh you have patrick wilson's kid and Halle Berry has also a foreign exchange student for some reason. So it's three kids driving in a Hummer from Los Angeles to Colorado. Evacuating instead of taking a helicopter. Because, of course, Colorado, NORAD, you go inside the mountain. Although NORAD in this movie is on top of the mountain. Not really inside. There's like literally no protection th pieces of the moon fall down and just just it's mind-blowing but the f road trip takes only a few hours in this movie to drive from la to colorado they get their car hijacked in a stu like uh, okay sure it's lawless time although security guards are still working it's lawless time sure these people with guns are going to carjack and try to get other resources and whatever so okay they get carjacked whatever whatever so now they're on foot right and they just walk through the mountains and they end up right in aspen at their parents house that they are supposedly like some random house that just happens to be the house where uh where uh patrick wilson's ex is and the new stepdad wacky like just they just walk through the mountains like like colorado is you could just walk across colorado in a few hours it, it's crazy it is crazy and they just happen to have like heavy coats you know coming from california obviously people in california have super insulated heavy coats for the snow because it snows all the time in la obviously right so you get carjacked walk through the mountains through the colorado rockies and end up in aspen effortlessly effortlessly just happen to show up at their parents house effortlessly despite the fact that some random people are at the gate of the like gated community i don't know really know what that whole thing is 
they show up to a gate and there's people with a gun shooting at them. <laughs> you know, because when everything's going to shit, people are just going to be outside in the snow ready to kill people instead of like hunkered down in a bunker preparing for the moon to crash into the world. But the whole time there's like this chase. They like steal their car back at one point from the, the same carjackers. They run into them again trying to get oxygen because they just know the oxygen's going to run out. Of course it does, but why would they just assume oxygen's going to run out? Right? They're trying to get to NORAD from this house in Aspen, and they go to this place to get oxygen tanks. Just happens to be a bunch of oxygen cha- oxygen tanks and, and masks, and the carjackers just happen to show up at that same place. So they they... You know, they have a gun now, so they they turn the tables on the carjackers, and there's this chase going on. Like, the carjackers are desperate for that oxygen as well, because apparently everybody knows that the oxygen is just going to go away. They just all know that the, uh, that's just something that's going to happen. Doesn't make any sense. There is an insane during this chase. Like, meanwhile, like, parts of the moon are crashing into the the world and these actors are super chill about it like a mountain will just get like a rocket just crashing into a mountain and they just look and they're just like we need to get going like very chill about just random asteroids just just you just landing everywhere around them but they're in this chase and he jumps like there's a big crack o- opens up in the world and he like jumps there's like a little incline you know like in speed and the freeways out and just jumps this car this subaru or whatever and midair there's another chunk of world just kind of like floating you know as it's been blown up and the car lands on that and then jumps again it's like a super video game jump just wacky of course they land and everybody's fine everybody's fine it is great it is bonkers and then they just walk to a tunnel and then instead of going in the tunnel they're just all right on the edge of the tunnel like they're like oh there's a tunnel that's going to be deep in the mountain unlike norad that's just on the top of the mountain this is actually going to be inside the mountain and as they're walking one of the the girl's tanks runs out and the dad gives it to her and they're far away from everybody else like they are walking so slow that everybody else is so far ahead of them for some reason so then the girl gets the dad's gas tank and she's just he like gives her this mantra left foot right foot left foot right foot she's just so stupid that she just does that left foot right foot left foot right foot meanwhile he's dying he's so far away Uh, another person that just can't hold their breath right Dude could have taken one last breath and would have had a few minutes where he could have ran with his daughter. Or he could have, like, shared it, you know? Like, okay, you take a deep breath. Now I'll take a deep breath. Now you take a deep Now I'll take a deep breath. Like, there's ways he could have. It just, but whatever. He died. Good. I'm glad. He died. Stupid people dying. Everybody should have died. Nobody should have lived. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want eight by 10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to InspiredDisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, You buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available 
for select faces. Go to inspireddisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. There's also like this love thing with the foreign exchange student and Patrick Wilson's son, which is I, they're bonding over like of over like Japanese font tattoos. I, I, it's like it is mind blowing what's going on. But then even like they get to this tunnel and they're just right in the opening of the tunnel. They're not going into the tunnel at all. They're just all right there watching everything happen. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. That whole like just effortlessly driving. It's like you can't even drive across L.A. in the time it took them to go to Colorado. And of course, L.A. is flooded. Maybe they didn't start in L.A. Maybe they started. I don't know. It's it seemed like they were in L.A. Initially, it's where it seemed like they showed the ob- observatory. That's where Patrick Wilson's character was anyway. So maybe they drove from L.A. to Houston and then from Houston to Colorado still take more than a few hours and not walking through the Rockies to Aspen in, you know, an hour, 20 minutes, however long it took them to walk to Aspen after getting their car stolen. It's just so much, so much of this movie is just absolutely bad shit. Um it's uh let's see if there's anything else when they go and explain everything way more interesting the mega structure is an arc from a past civilization of humans and t- t- because ai was attacking them and out of all of the the mega structures that they started to build this was the only one that survived and you know that cloud is ai which is controlling these nanobots to try and attack it and like this is like that all of that stuff was way more interesting and just told in a massive exposition dump yeah it's uh oh after everything so they're trying to plan this mission to the moon right to to launch this emp and there's an earthquake that happens while they're preparing for the launch damages one of the rockets and they're like we can't make it without this rocket we lost one of the three rockets and we can't make it now so then Halle berry's character just gets on the pa immediately and is like oh sorry humanity's lost we lost a rocket all of the smart people that work at NASA aren't going to be able to figure it out. So let's just call it quits. Sorry, everybody. Go. Bye. And just everybody leaves. But then randomly, they, like, the conspiracy theory guy had an idea. And they're like, oh, we can do it. And you're like, you know what? We're going to bring you conspiracy theory guy. Because we may need on-the-fly calculations in space. And then they go anyway. It, like, doesn't make any sense. Like, things happen, but it doesn't matter. You know, the rocket went, so they're like, okay, everybody. And that speech is is almost like the president's speech in Independence Day. Like, she's trying to be, like, really profound. Like, we did everything we could. Today is our Independence Day. It's just, it's just so bad. It's so bad. She's complaining, like, they get a rocket that's in a museum, right? Multiple characters are saying, like, the only rockets we would have like that are in museums. So they go to a museum, and it's spray-painted, like, during the the riots and society breaking down, people took the time to spray-paint the space shuttle. Fuck the moon. It's got all these tags on it. And while they're preparing to do this mission, she's complaining that they didn't take the time to repaint the rocket like it matters. Like they have the luxury and time to repaint the rocket. It, it's just, what do you do? The, the earth, the moon is like giant. It's like big. It's not far above the 
people. It's like scraping the tops of moons, the of mountains, as it's still somehow orbiting the world. Like it's somehow it's so close that it's scraping the top of mountains, but not close enough to even though it has its own gravity as well, there's some it's not just falling directly onto Earth, but it's that close to where it's like you know, it's scraping the tops of mountains, but not crashing into the world, not crashing into Earth completely. It just doesn't make, it just hurts my brain watching this movie of how nothing makes any sense. But yeah, that's Moonfall. My explanation of Moonfall is probably as coherent as the movie. I wanted to talk about certain things that just did not make any sense to me. And like I said, if I was drunk or high and around friends that, and we were talking shit, this is a movie that, this is like a, a Mystery Science Theater 2000, 3000 movie. This is a Riff Tracks movie where you can just effortlessly, there's so much stuff to talk shit about. Maybe I'll do a commentary on it. <laughs> Maybe I'll rewatch this again. Maybe I'll, I'll get some alcohol. I'll watch this movie, record it record a commentary so people can watch along now that it's on hbo max you know we hit play at the same time i drink some whiskey or some tequila or whatever and just talk shit about everything that happens in this movie that doesn't make any sense that just like it just the the laziest writing looks cool visually it's interesting i mean Roland Emmerich knows how to make massive destruction look interesting on screen. Like when L.A. is getting flooded, interesting. When the gravity thing is weird, is interesting. Doesn't make any sense, but it's interesting. Anyway, Moonfall, it's on HBO Max. I would only watch it if you plan, if you, I, you know what you're getting into. So if that sounds interesting, like oh, I got to watch this bad movie. You've been warned. You've been warned. It is it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And seriously, the end all of the exposition is a far more interesting movie. <laughs> like that's that should have just been the movie. Like you could do a prequel, I guess, to this movie and see how that all happened. Which is weird cuz they get into the mega structure and they see this dwarf star and they're just staring at it. It's a sun. They're staring at a sun. Which is another thing the stupid person that wanted to, that was in charge of this country for a while, who wanted to nuke a storm, also during Eclipse just stared at the sun, even though he was told not to. Like, this movie is very much on the same intelligence level as Donald Trump. Uh, so anyway, Moonfall, check it out. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.